This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need hosting for your art portfolio, blog, or online store, Squarespace has all the website building, marketing, and analytics tools you need to build a sleek website and grow your brand. Hey, so I'm once again a little brain dead this week because I spent the last two weeks making this. And you know, when I'm feeling about one brain cell shy of a piece of toast, the only thing I really feel like doing is drawing ladies with swords. And as many of you know, I have been very enamored of armor gowns as of late, but I have yet to actually make one, and that just absolutely needs to change. So I'm finally gonna design and make a freaking armor gown. But just the design part today, because yikes, I'm tired. So for inspiration, I pulled from a few different sources. I had a few themed armor gowns that I wanted to design, but then I also asked my lovely patrons, patreon.com slash picklyalpaca, always be plugging, for a couple of different theme ideas. So the gown themes that I came up with are a blue porcelain gown, yeah, I don't know what to call this one, a sun gown, a moon gown, and a dragon gown. My inspiration for these wasn't too specific, but I did add some sets of armor and other armor gowns to a Pinterest board to give me some visual idea of what I want to do. Most of them are just the armor gowns that I've been drooling over for about six months now. So let's satiate my hunger for beautiful armored high fashion and get started. So first off, I'm beginning with the blue porcelain gown for lack of a better name. And this gown doesn't have as much of a concrete theme because it's actually a project that I've been working on the physical build of, but in classic Kira fashion, I've yet to come up with a concrete design for the look, especially the dress and fabric parts of the build. So, um, the inspiration for this is literally just the candy makeup artist porcelain corsets. That's it. I just need a corset like this in my life, so I started making one and didn't really have any sort of plan only vibes. I just wanted to make something generally elfy and ornate because I've never done something like that before, and I also wanted an excuse to buy a pretty blonde lace front wig so that I can feel like a Targaryen. So the basis for this is something a little more armor and jewelry forward, with clothing parts that are a mix of elegant gown and something a little bit more functional and battle ready, minus the elegant drapes of fabric because who could fight in that? But uh, look, it has pants, so that means it's functional. So for the armor itself, I designed a main corset piece that's paired with shoulder pieces, hip pieces, and some little bracers for a more feminine look. Obviously, armor gowns aren't functional armor, they're more so taking the aesthetics of armor and working them into a more ceremonial and feminine silhouette. So I also worked in a lot of chains and jewelry, cascading off the armor and draping onto the shoulders and dangling like earrings off of the headpiece, because I really feel like that'll add a lot of texture and visual interest in a physical version of this. And and speaking of visual interest, when it came to colors, I chose largely a blue color scheme, which is a color scheme that I rarely choose for myself, so I wanted to play around with it a little bit more, and I combined that with notes of gold to give it even more visual flair, because again, whenever I'm designing something that I intend to actually make, I'm also trying to factor in how it would look in a physical state, what kind of materials I would use, what sewing methods I would use, etc. So it's always a bit of a different ball game than my character design videos, for instance, because while I could theoretically make those, I'm less concerned about the execution of the build whenever I'm creating those designs and this for instance I know I can create because this design is basically half done and the clothing pieces I've chosen to go underneath the armor have also been informed by the physical building process because I tried a certain style of garment with the armor didn't really like it and now I'm designing something that I think will suit the armor a little bit better but something that's still generally based on the materials that I already bought for the project so for the clothing I went for a sort of tunic slash robe that basically has a butt skirt in the back and a long piece with designs on it in the front. This kind of gives me Zelda vibes from some of her early 2000s designs, so I think that's kind of a fun nod to elfie tropes, I don't know. Anyways, under that is just some navy blue pants, some high boots with more gold designs on them, and when I build those, I'll probably achieve those designs with the boot covers or just find some boots to absolutely marinate in spray paint and hot glue silicone mold designs. And finally, to round things out and give it a little bit more elegance, I add another skirt style layer to the back to make the silhouette resemble a gown a little bit more, as well as some fabric that drapes off her arms. And when I make this, I think a blue crystal
crystal organza would be perfect for those drapier fabrics. As I'm sure many of you have noticed, I've been pretty obsessed with crystal organza lately, but what can I say? It just kind of slays. And this is the final design that I have in mind that you will almost certainly be seeing since like I said, I've already made about half of it. But before we move on to the next design, if you're interested in character design, clothing design, or illustration, you need a place where you can display all of those things, which you can do with this video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace offers dozens of professional and customizable website and portfolio templates that make it easy to showcase your beautiful art of armored ladies to everyone on the internet. Squarespace offers tons of easy customization like text, colors, and various website pages so that you can design a portfolio exactly how you'd like it. I have portfolio galleries both for my illustrative work and for my clothing and costume design, which were super easy to customize with features like automatic image scaling that allow you to set up galleries of your work with the touch of a button. Squarespace allows you to display a variety of media in a variety of ways. You can set up slideshows or image grids for stylish image presentation. If you have an animation or demo reel that's in video form, Squarespace offers video blocks uploaded from your computer or embedded from the internet. And Squarespace even has audio blocks that support podcasts and other audio that's relevant to your brand. And if you're interested in selling your work online, Squarespace's e-commerce platform can be linked right alongside your portfolio, creating one cohesive location for all aspects of your brand. So if you want to showcase your obsession with shiny objects, head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash pricklyalpaca to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's love letter to women in armor. Now let's get back to it. Next up is a sun gown and then a moon gown, which were kind of both suggested by Sweet Winter Garden on Patreon. I, I think they more so wanted me to design a night sky armor gown, but I've already kind of done that. And them mentioning the sun and moon gave me some ideas. There's just so much inspiration for sun armor on Pinterest that I just had to give this a go. So for this, I wanted a very grand silhouette, something that would be largely ceremonial with a ballooning skirt and lots of layers. And if I ever made it, something that wouldn't just be cool to walk around conventions or rent fairs in. I basically took aspects of these designs that I like and combined them, expanding from there and messing around with the shapes to get a consistent language going. I wanted the concept of the gown to be based around the idea of sun rays cascading down, beginning with armor and eventually becoming layered pieces of fabric. So the armor begins with a headpiece and cowl that are shaped like sun rays and range down to an armor corset and eventually flow into some sun-shaped tassets. On the bottom, the look has gold and brown skirt layers and some gold greaves. I also added some beading coming off the gold skirt layer and made the hem the same sun ray shape present in the rest of the design to tie everything together. And of course, I rounded out the design with a sword and shield to make this a true ladies with swords video. I think the design for these ended up coming out pretty cool. It's fantasy nonsense and definitely not functional, but all of these designs are not functional at all. We're really just going for looks here. So with the weapons, I really tried to balance a mix of curved and geometrical shapes to avoid repeating the same sun ray shape too many times, but I did use use a sun motif on both once again, but instead with a large circle as the base shape. The colors on this one aren't too crazy. It's mostly monochrome with varying shades of gold and warm brown, but I think this helps to lend some elegance to it in the midst of my maximalism nonsense. This is definitely an example of strong triangle circle shape language, and that's always fun to play around with. And overall, I'm pretty happy with this look. I think it would be super fun to make and would be super fun to wear at events, if a little dangerous, but I also think I might revisit this design a little bit before actually making it just to polish up some of the design a bit and especially define some of the contours in the corset because right now it's very much just an abstract representation. <laughs> Next is of course the moon gown and I wanted this to be the antithesis to the sun gown in many ways. So while I still used a mix of circles and triangles in the shape language, that's where the two designs diverge. I wanted this one to feel more ethereal and celestial because obviously the moon. So I gave all of the armor bits cleaner, sleeker shapes and based the bulk of the structure on large arcs shaped like crescent moons. This design also isn't quite as armor heavy as the sun, and I mostly focused on a corset style breastplate and also included basically a little armor skirt instead of tassets. These pieces are all accented with some geometric lines and little star motifs hanging off the armor, along with star motifs as her earrings. And because these need to be stabby stabby fantasy gowns, I also gave her a little moon staff. I basically feel like this would work maybe as a mage staff and a scythe, like the crescent part is sharp on both sides for maximum slashing. 
and I think it would be a lot of fun to make and then swing around. Of course, as a dull prop weapon, I'm not that confident in my broom swinging skills, and I don't want this to turn into the opening scene of Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do for the gown part of this look at first, but then I got to thinking about large fluffy clouds sweeping across the night sky, which got me thinking about this dress design. And I thought something similar would be amazing for the skirt and sleeves, so I chose more of a mermaid shape for the skirt and the same for the long sleeves, and also added a large flowing cape. I think a satin with some gradient on it would be perfect for this dress if I were to make it, so if I end up turning this into a build project, I think this would be a fun adventure into the world of fabric dye. As for the armor bits, I'm definitely partial to foam for a lot of projects, but lately I've been leaning towards Warbla, even though it's very expensive, but it's really sturdy if you have to corset yourself in, and it's pretty flattering on the body since you can shape it to yourself. Plus, it's a thermoplastic, so there's basically no waste since you can use all of it. But for this gown, I might even consider 3D printing some parts. I have access to some 3D printers at my old college, so I definitely want to venture into the 3D printing world on a project at some point, especially as an excuse to learn some more 3D modeling software. Overall, I think this design is really fun, but again, it might need some reworking if I actually make it, but I love how elegant the vibe is. It almost has an Art Nouveau feel to it. And finally, we have a dragon gown. This ended up being something else. Uh, she's kind of a mess. I was watching a historical true crime doc on Jack the Ripper whenever I drew this, so it put me in a bit of a weird headspace. But anyways, this was suggested by a lovely patron, Megan Penland, and I've never been super great at drawing dragons or even designing dragons, but I think they're really cool, so I figured I would give this a shot. The concept of this is admittedly less armor gown and a little bit more just weird themed gown. In actual execution, I feel like it would involve a lot of latex and silicone, and I don't know if that is the most plausible, but hear me out. I think one route of doing this would be some like red dyed leather instead of like normal plate armor. And I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but whenever I'm thinking about this, I was kind of inspired by some of the dress designs and general Targaryen designs in House of the Dragon, especially Rhaenyra's costuming. And a lot of the like dragon motifs on her dresses just looked like they were like leather embellishments or something like that. Anyways, getting back on track, I kind of wanted a dragon to wrap around the body of the dress, creating sort of a cowl and pauldrons with its head and claws. So I initially tried the claw idea with a bigger head and it felt pretty clunky, so I ended up repositioning the dragon a bit and just making it a very long boy. And I tried to make it look like an actual dragon friend was basically hugging the body of this character, making his little hands and legs part of the gown structure, with again its head serving as one side of the collar or cowl and its wings serving as the other. And then his tail sort of wraps around and creates the dress bottom, although if I made it I would probably make the tail look a little bit more natural and integrated into the design because it feels a little bit contrary to the flow of the bottom in its current state. But to round out the design I gave the dress long gloves with some claws on them because dragons. And I also added a little cape and mermaid style skirt that are supposed to look like dragon wings. And I also ended up adding a little headpiece that looks like dragon horns that tapers into little dragon teeth down my cheeks, which I also feel like would be a super fun part of the build. In terms of color, it's not super interesting. I think this dress is one that I would also iterate on a bit more purely based on the need to make it far less abstract so that I could actually make the thing. And also, while I like the red, I think it would need some more oranges and yellows to warm it up a bit and add more visual interest. And I also think a fire drake theme would also be a great opportunity for some LEDs because as you know, I can't help throwing LEDs into basically every project. Overall, I think this would be incredibly convoluted and challenging to try and pull off, but it would also be pretty darn fun. And I think with some good fabrication and airbrushing, this would be a pretty impressive prop slash dress to bring to life. And I tell you what, the older I get, the more I'm learning that my design sensibility is just that of, you know, the capital city from the Hunger Games. I just wanna look wild everywhere I go. Anyways, and with that, these are all the finished designs from this video, and I'm sorry it was only four this time, but I'm going out of town next week for vacation and I need to double up on making videos this week so I don't have the most time to whip out extra designs. But I do have a few work in progress pieces on my iPad, many of which are suggestions from other patrons, so if y'all want me to make a follow-up armor gown video to give myself a few more options for my armor gown project, I would be more than happy to do that. And I'm thinking I'm going to 
choose one to make over my Christmas break, so definitely let me know which one you like best so far, and feel free to give me suggestions on how to improve the designs or suggestions of themes for other gowns. But thank you all so much for watching, and the most chivalrous of thank yous goes to my patrons, especially my executive producers. Eloquent Silence, Midnight Nova, John L, Meeks Hunter, Cleos, Blue, In the Galaxy, Mel W, Jim Jiminy, Jim Jiminy, Satoni, Sushi McNushi, Megan Penland, Owlian, Bean the Bread, Bobo McFoe, Gravity Drop, Hypnos, India, Jessica Dilling, Katie, Michael Twy Cross Panda Pie 365, Refnlings, Silver, Sweet Winter Garden, Welly Kelly, and Will Schmidt. Thank you all so much for your support, it really does mean the most. But now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to be retreating to the mountains for the next four days.